Okay, class, let's start the part four of our animation basic series. So we are opening the same file that's in the description from all the um, animation basic series, which is this box bounds.blend. It's in the description also, and it should be attached if uh, in your uh, weekly video lesson and homework. Okay, so this is the one without the animation. Remember the previous one we deleted some of the keys to get back to this one, but you can just open this one right here, okay? So right here, we're gonna rename this now since we're uh, gonna be saving this uh, as a different file. So I'm gonna go save as, we're gonna call this one box bounds armature or parent, okay? Or rig, we'll call it rig, okay? Uh, rig simply is a, um, is a uh, system in uh, what we call in 3D where uh, there is a helper or uh, an extra or bones or armature that is driving the animation of the object, okay? So uh, let's set this first. Uh, let's go to our animation tab, okay? Here I'm going to click the fourth one, which is the uh, render, uh, final render look, okay? Uh, here we're going to press T for tools, so we get to see our tools. We're going to press N. Okay, and let me turn on my screencast. Okay, so that we see all that and then items tab right here. So again, T to show the toolbar and for the sidebar. Okay, and we're almost there uh, exactly as is. I'm gonna press tilde to go to front. You can also click numpad one as long as your mouse cursor is here. Okay, so don't be going over here and pressing those buttons then that command will be on this one. Okay, so. The last, the previous animation, our issue is that um, our cube is not prepared for the squashing, right? We have to set our pivot point all the way to the bottom so that when we do our squash, uh, it's squashing from the bottom. The other thing too is the principle of animation of solid drawing. This cube does not deform sideways and in out. You know, it's only going up and down, right? So basically it's happening like this. So it's not growing on the side. So you got to maintain volume in order to, uh, you know, so that it's a solid object, okay? Th that mass needs to go somewhere. So we need to address those. And finally, we cannot rotate like this, okay? Because we set our pivot point at the bottom. So it basically tumbles from the bottom, okay? So what we're going to do now is uh, give the animation of translation or move up and down and the squashing to a helper so that then the cube right here will be independent and it can do all sorts of things. You know, it can do three transform animation, but for our purpose, we just want to rotate. Okay. So let's add that helper. Okay. So for that help, helper, uh, I'm going to shift A, one way to do it, or you can go to add mesh. Uh, sorry, add, not mesh, uh, empty circle, okay? So we're gonna have this circle right here. So we want to put this at the bottom of the cube. Since this is already set up at the center, all we have to do for that one is rotate it while it's selected, right? R, X, 90. So I rotated it along the X axis, 90 degrees. So while you have the empty circle selected, there it is, okay? So instead of calling it empty, okay, we're gonna go add the word parent right there, just so that uh, you guys can tell what's happening right here, okay? We're also gonna clean this up. Uh, we want to separate the cube and the parent into a new collection. So this is your outliner collection right here. Think of this as your grouping, okay? And in a way layering, okay? So what I want well, with those two selected is right click it, and then uh, we're gonna click on new collection. Okay, so let's put the new collection in there. So cube and then parent empty. Okay, and then we're gonna put this outside. So I'm going to drag it all the way up there. So it's the same kind of outside level as this. So now we're gonna, uh, we, uh, you can call the collection right here, anything you want. So we can put this one, uh, just put it uh, lights and camera. So we know that's a group and then um, that's a cell, right? So, and I'm gonna truncate that kind of like that, minimize it. This one right here will be our uh, animation 
object. So we're doing a little bit of Martha Stewart uh, upkeep right here. Um, even though we barely have anything in the scene, it's just that it makes uh, everything kind of neat and easy to kind of follow. And we want to introduce to you good habits when it comes to naming your object and uh, uh, keeping up with uh, your collection so that you can minimize the damage later when you're looking for stuff and there's bazillion objects in here you don't know where to look for okay uh what to look for and where to look okay right here also if you see this this is the collection filter if i click that i can add to the uh tabs that are in there right now we only have uh renderability and uh and visibility we're gonna include selectability which is the arrow so by doing that you get to see this um arrow right here and then from the previous one I uh, disabled that so you can't accidentally select anything except for the cube so this is good uh, habit when you're animating so that you can concentrate on the task at hand right so right now we can't see the uh, helper so let's click on the helper right there and then scale it so I'm gonna press s I'll go to my select tool here press s and then all right or like that so enough to, so that we can actually see it and select it okay again these are the only things we can select right because everything else is not selectable all right so now that we did that as you can see here in the scale it kind of changed its number right rotation 90 we're leaving it as that right remember we rotated it on the x so this one we want to apply so that we get a value of 111 okay so we're going to go to object apply apply scale so by doing that so this is now one 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 so we can easily track our scaling if we scaled it 1.5 you know so it's a lot easier to comprehend okay so um uh, again uh we will then make this as the parent and this is the one we're going to animate and this one is solely for rotation so the parent will be uh movement animation and scaling animation and then this one will be uh rotation okay so let's parent it first or you know, let's add another uh element to this one so we have our uh helper selected okay and what we want with this is add a constraint okay right here this is the tab and we want to give it a maintain volume constraint okay what this will do is that when we scale it we don't have to worry about the X and Y expansion, it's just the Z uh, that we're gonna worry about, okay? But we're not gonna see that effect yet until we do this. So we're gonna select the uh, cube, okay? And then shift, select the parent. Remember, the parent is always selected last. So if I have 10 cubes and then I shift click the uh, circle last, all those 10 cubes will be uh, uh, children to the circle, okay? Remember that one always the last one to pick okay so uh let's do that now so to parent this keyboard shortcut is control p it's in parent and we do want to parent this as an object okay so there we go so all i did was shift select the circle last control p and then click object okay so right now if i grab the circle and i go to my move tool right here all right, so now it's following the circle. Whatever I do with this circle, okay, uh, rotation and scaling. All right, remember what do we add? What did we add here? Remember we added the maintain volume, but you can see right there, there's the rig itself. Okay, when I press on Y axis, I mean Z axis. It not only goes up and down, it's already providing the two axes right there. Again, this is a very simple rig, but already you're seeing uh, how we're eliminating counter animation, right? All uh, We're eliminating a lot of the animators' um, uh, extra job that they have to do in order to uh, perform their animation. So instead of animating X, Y, Z, we are just now animating the Z axis, okay? So that's basically the rig, okay? And now all we have to do is once we do the uh, uh, the animation going up and down uh, and scaling for the uh, for the circle, we can add an extra animation for this one, which we couldn't do before because the pivot or the origins at the bottom. 
now we can have a kind of rotation animation while it's jumping. All right, so let's just jump through this real quick. And this is from the previous lesson, so you can fast forward the animation here. I'm not going to talk much here because we already covered this, okay? But I'll do it real quick. So first, uh, let me change my animation to 24 frames. Tilde, frame all, okay? So we're going to go to our uh, move tool right here. So on frame one, uh, we want this one. I think I remember we set this up five up, okay? Okay, so it's up there. All right, and then now I'm going to keyframe that. So that would be the Z-axis. Okay, insert single keyframe. And here uh, we know obviously that the, the next one, the one and 24 is the same. So I can select this now and shift D it over there. But uh, that's one way to kind of preview your posing. Okay, so this one right here, we set this to zero. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, frame 10, you gotta go frame 10. We're skipping the 12 now where we expanded because you've seen the future. I mean, you've seen the past, you know, and we did all that so that uh, you see all the mistakes go in and correct it. Here, we're just going directly at the solution, okay? Insert single keyframe, and then we want frame 10, shift D to 14. We want it to stay on the ground, and then um, frame one, we just copy it to 24. And when we preview this, okay, it has this kind of wrong, um, uh, graph editor interpolation, no, not interpolation, but the graph editor, okay, the spacing is wrong. So let's fix that real quick. Again, this is covered in detail in the last uh, lesson. So here I'm just going to fly through it, okay, graph editor. So select all by pressing A, tilde, frame all, okay. And then right here, this two right here, we're just going to press V to get the, uh, as in uh, victory for the uh, handle type. I'm going to change that to vector. Grab the handle for 14 straight. Grab the handle right there. And I think we push this GX a little bit here to slow it down a bit. Okay, it's kind of eyeballing that the same. Now let's take a look. All right, so it has that kind of drop right now. And all we have to do now is animate a 10. Frame 10, this one, okay? So on Z axis, Right here on scale, no scaling. So we insert single keyframe. Okay, let's go back to a dope sheet here so we can see the keys. Okay, and there's the Z scale. Okay, and then on frame 12, we animate this one. So let's drop the Z axis. Uh, you can drag it in here or in here. So, and it's going to maintain the volume. All we have to do now is Z axis, no more X and Y. Okay, let's say. Um, it's dragging it. It's going to animate its, um, its Y axis because that's the, uh, we didn't see, I, I forgot to, uh, reset the orientation for this one, uh, in the apply. Okay. But that's fine. But it's the, y, um, it's the Y axis that, uh, did that one. So I'm going to click undo. So I forgot to do one thing in our maintenance right there. So let me eliminate that. Okay. I mean, you can animate here to see it visually but it's actually the y-axis doing that okay so let's do the y-axis here and what did it say uh, let's go 0.6 okay so y-axis uh sorry oh that's to be on one okay insert single keyframe we go to frame 12 we go 0 0.6 insert single keyframe and then um we go to frame 14, we set that to one. Insert single keyframe and let's take a look. All right, so if you want this more exaggerated, so let's go to frame 12. Let's uh, flatten this some more. So I'm gonna go 0.3 instead of 0.6. So that's really like very pancake. And what, it, what happens is that when you're precisely on the key, make sure you're on the key here in the timeline, this will just simply overwrite that. So instead of insert single keyframe, you see this word now called replace. And we just replace 0.6 to 0.3. Remember, you got to keyframe that, otherwise it won't record it. Okay, now let's play it. So it's a little bit more kind of squishy at this point. Okay, so there it is. So what we can do here now is to animate our uh, cube. Okay, so this one is not doing anything at this point. By itself, it's being driven by the helper or the parent, right? So let me go to tilde right here and then go to the right side. So we are seeing this one here, okay? 
So we want to rotate this um, 180 when it hits the ground and squashing, okay? And then uh, uh, it will do a 360 rotation. So that's all going to be here. Uh, we're on the... Uh, we the, oh, this is the back. No, no, we need to be at the right side. So I put the wrong side. There we go. So we need to be on the x-axis. So we want it going this way. So on frame one, no rotation on the x, zero. Okay, insert single keyframe. And then let's take a look. So once it drops to, uh, to 10 right here, okay, to 10, we rotate it forward uh, 180 degrees. Okay, 180 positive. Then insert 180. Insert single keyframe. So let's preview that animation. So, so from one, did that rotation, and then here it's squashing, and then here on frame 14, we want to uh, keyframe this again. We want to keep it at 180 degrees. Okay. And then when it goes up to 24, we want to put 360 on this one. Insert single keyframe, so which is not possible to do uh, rotating at the center from the previous animation, but here you see it. Okay, so it has a little bit of kind of lag right there at the top because the animation is just looping. That's all. Okay, so. That completes this series, kind of like an introduction to uh, to parents uh, hierarchy of uh, objects. Um, a little bit of constraint is introduced, and then finally rigging an animation to make your life easier as an animator. Okay, but before we end this, let's uh, quickly um, uh, show the exporting part of this one. So we go to this uh, printer tab. Uh, sorry, to the uh, render first. Make sure you're on EV. Okay, and here just uh, turn on ambient occlusion. That will give us a little bit of a, well, you're not going to see it, but uh, it's not going to affect performance. Okay, ambient occlusion. Uh, we're showing this so that the, uh, the things that you need to turn on while uh, rendering. Okay, and then we're going to go to the output. Looks like a printer. Okay, leave everything as default, 24 frames per second, and then we're only animating from 1 to 24. Very important to output. Okay, we're going to dump this on the desktop so we can easily see it. Okay, we're going to call it first, uh, your first name and then your last name. And then here, not transform, we're going to call this one uh, rig. Okay, rig and, uh, and then click accept. Okay, and then we're here, we're going to change the uh, file format okay, to uh, MPEG video. And then don't render yet you got to go encoding change your container to quicktime why quicktime because it previews uh nicely in um on ms teams okay and leave everything as default okay so make sure quicktime and then uh it's your container don't submit mkv you'll get zero okay render at the top render animation and just wait for it to do its thing it's pretty quick okay it's only one second word of render and then let me see here uh if I can show that to you, it should be on, okay, right here. Okay, let me put on loop, play. Okay, that's what it should look like, okay? So make sure to submit uh, your Blender file and your QuickTime file in Brightspace once the homework tab is open. Okay, so thank you for watching. If there's any confusion and whatnot, um, you know, watch the video again. It is step by step. Uh, and uh, the only thing I messed up here is uh, I forgot to uh, to apply the um, rotation uh, in the object before doing the animation. So we ended up animating the Y axis instead of the Z, which is fine. Uh, all you have to do is you know um, just follow the tutorial and you'll get the same result. All right. See you on the next video.